Microsoft's new cyber defense operations center goes operational. The FCC says open source router operating systems aren't dead yet, but they're trying. Email, it's more secure now, and the Internet of Things is even more doomy than usual. All that and more coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for November 17th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Got to drop some thanks to everybody that makes the show possible by contributing to patreon.com slash threatwire. Brett Arsenault, Chief Information Security Officer at Microsoft, dropped some interesting news on the MS blog this morning, an entry titled Enterprise Security for our Mobile First Cloud First World. Sound boring? Well, actually, on top of calling out the billion-plus Microsoft drops annually on, quote, security research and development, Mr. Arsenault announced that Microsoft was launching a new, get this, folks, I'm quoting here, a new Cyber Defense Operations Center. This state-of-the-art facility brings together security response experts from across the company to help protect, detect, and respond to threats in real time. Staffed with dedicated teams 24-7, the center has direct access to thousands of security professionals, data analysts, engineers, developers, program managers, and operations specialists throughout Microsoft to ensure rapid response and resolution to security threats. Informed by decades of experience working with the industry to fight threats on a global scale, the center maintains critical connections with industry security partners, governments, and enterprise customers, and engages is Microsoft's digital crimes unit when law enforcement needs arise. Okay, the voice might be making fun of that, but think about it in terms of actually dealing with massive security issues on a global platform. The idea of having one big place to bring the grid of information together sounds pretty smart, actually. Arsenault adds, quote, it's only by working closely with our partners and the security ecosystem and governments around the world that we can ensure customers and businesses are able to trust the technology they use and don't view security as a barrier to technology adoption. Which hopefully amongst other things means uh, Microsoft's gonna continue to roll with bounties uh, for bugs and repairing flaws rather than lawyering up and threatening people and bringing out NDAs when security researchers find flaws in Microsoft products. The FCC is not banning open source router operating systems. That's the word on the FCC blog right there in black and white in a delightfully titled article, Clearing the Air on Wi-Fi Software Updates. That post is by Julius Knapp, the chief of the Office of Engineering and Technology at the FCC. Uh, to summarize, Mr. Knapp says, people wanted to know if we were, quote, mandating wholesale blocking of open source firmware modifications. That was with the FCC rules query that said manufacturers would have to explain how uh, its device is protected from flashing and the installation of third party firmware such as DDWRT, which to me sounds like they're calling out open source firmwares to be stopped in the future. TLDR, FCC says, no, we're just trying to keep devices RF compliant. The longer answer, Mr. Knapp says, quote, we were not, but we agree that the guidance we provide manufacturers must be crystal clear to avoid confusion. So today we released a revision to that guidance to clarify that our instructions were narrowly focused on modifications that would take a device out of compliance. So the thing here is whether or not there actually exists any hardware that allows you to implement an open source router operating system without having access to the things that could potentially take the router out of FCC compliance. Oh boy. The future of router firmware is far from over, people. The FCC says it welcomes, quote, continued input from manufacturers, users, technologists, and others as they work to finalize the new rules. Seriously, shout from the rooftops, because uh, router manufacturers you can trust to A, build secure products, and B, update them over time. Very, very short list. Email, people. It's more secure now, but it still has a way to go, especially with encrypted connections between email servers, i.e. avoiding snooping. So says a report from the University of Michigan and the University of Illinois, who were, oddly enough, partnered with Gmail. Uh, authentication, by the way, pretty good, over 94%. Inbound encrypted email to Gmail has gone from 33 to 61%. 80% of Gmail to non-Gmail recipients is encrypted. And of course, all Gmail to Gmail is encrypted end to end. Two of the big challenges to email security. Number one, malicious DNS servers, which is actually kind of number two because it's more obscure but potentially more dangerous. And quote, we found regions of the internet actively preventing message encryption by tampering with requests to initiate SSL connections to mitigate this attack. We are working closely with the partners through the Industry Association M3AAWG to strengthen opportunistic TLS using technologies that we pioneered with Chrome to protect websites against interception, end quote, from the Google blog in question, which is my polite way of saying, they're doing stuff at a level you and I can't. Go Google. And just to keep us all motivated, I got a few security fails of the week. 
Yeah, first up, Vice.com's motherboard reports, quote, until this month, if you were one of the more than 10 million Metro PCS subscribers, anyone who knew your phone number could easily get all your personal information from the company's website, including your home address, your type of plan, and even your phone's model and serial number which compared to the other information sounds pretty mild, but if you're panicked right now because you're on Metro PCS, we got a link in the show notes for you. Second up, Docker and CoreOS are tightening container security. Woot, that's a win, right? Not a security fail. Well, the standards are kind of platform specific and kind of done in different ways. And while both are incredibly important to these type of containerized objects being successful in enterprises or just non-hackable because they are so easy to post, hacked information into it. Just trust me, this is a good thing, but the fact that the standards are platform specific and not kind of working together, not so good. Please, please, Docker, CoreOS, bring it together. Unite the clans, unite the clans. Finally, if you just need to see if you can get a good old fashioned panic attack rolling from a blog entry, check out Krebs write up the lingering mess from default insecurity, which starts with a refresher on the botnets created when ubiquity shipped routers with remote administration twitched on by default with default passwords. Think 600 or a million potentially botted routers, yo, on the internet. And it ends with a great question from White Hat Security CTO Jeremiah Grossman, who says, quote, after the Internet of Things, devices get hacked en masse, and only after billions of internet-connected devices are deployed in the wild. Brace yourself, right? Here's the question. He says, quote, the question I'm asking myself today is when that day comes, and it will, how can we address the Internet of Things problem five to ten years from now with billions of those insecure devices in circulation? <laughs> Yeah, security people, tell your kids to get their degrees in computer security. Trust me. Quick reminder, if you want to get more in depth on any of these stories, and I highly suggest you do, especially that one on the internet, oh, things on Krebs, look down below. We got links to all the stories in the show notes. And I got to give a big shout out to each and every one of you that supports the show on Patreon. If you find value from this and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a Threatwire patron at patreon.com slash Threatwire. We may even feature your adorable hamster like this one in our next episode. Come on. Somebody out there must have a Gila Monster pic they can send in, please. Even better than Gila Monster photos, <laughs> we'll add an additional weekly episode when we hit our next Patreon milestone. It's how we keep the show coming completely independent and ad-free, patreon.com slash threatwire. Hey, if you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe go a long way too. And as always, you can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you out on the internets. Thank <laughs> you.